Hi everyone. Um, yeah, I thought I'd just do a short audio about going through trials and um, times of despair. There is another audio um, regarding um, answered or unanswered prayers. So if you do want to listen to that, just look through the podcast um, and you'll see the title there. But this one is just for for when you're in the midst of the storm, for when you're going through trials. Um, recently I'd received some news um, and it completely broke me down just because it had come off the back of something else and I just I just broke down in despair and my initial reaction was just God why me um, I was just do you know when you just feel like not something else to, to have to to worry about or sort out or another issue quote and unquote um, and just while I cried out to God and said, why me? I heard a voice deep down whilst I was still, you know, in my phase of lamenting. Um, and a voice deep down just said to me, why not you? Why not you? Who else if not you? Um, and that very quickly put me in check. And that very quickly um, turned me to scripture. And that very quickly um, made me appreciate God's faith in me. Um, And I thought to myself, it is probably better that a Christian who is established in their faith be tested or be put through trials than someone who is new to the faith and perhaps doesn't trust God God as much or perhaps doesn't um, know of his faithfulness as much because should that person with a quote-unquote weaker relationship with God be put to the test they will most likely fall Not to say that I won't fall or I won't stumble. Um, But I know of God's faithfulness to me and I know of God's goodness to me. And so the voice in my head said, if not you who is one of my own, if not you who has enjoyed my faithfulness, if not you who has lived in my goodness, if not you who has been showered and recognises my hand in their life, and their blessing, then who? And so I just want to encourage us today that no matter what you're going through, the tendency and the temptation is to turn around and say, why me? But really, we should be grateful that we've been chosen um, and do God proud and keep being faithful to him. Because if not you, who? Who? Your neighbour, your child, your best friend, your sister, your brother, your mother, your father. If not you, who? And I was drawn to Job. I've been reading a lot of Job lately. Um, I was drawn to Job um, chapter 2 verse 10. Um, So just to give you a bit of background, in in verse 9, Job's health deteriorates and his... his, um, his wife comes in and says to him you know um do you still retain your integrity curse god and die and job replies in verse 10 and says to his wife you speak as a foolish foolish woman speaks he told her should we accept from god only good and not adversity in all this job did not sin in what he said Um, The NIV version says, you're talking like a foolish woman. Should we accept good from God and not trouble? Um, NLT version says, you talk like a foolish woman. Should we accept only good things from the hand of God and never anything bad? So in all these, Job said nothing wrong. That's just... um, puts things into perspective and it, it for me personally it humbles me because a lot of us are always looking to God to see what we can get from God um, 
none of us want to get trouble from God. Um, but for as long as we are on this earth, adversity is part and parcel of the fallen world. Trials will come, some of it sanctioned by God, like it was done, you know, to Job. Some of it is just part of being in this sinful, fall, fallen world. Um, but in all of that, we are to accept the bad and the good. Because we know that Christ has overcome the world. And so let us take heart. Um, some of the, the Bible references that I've been sort of looking at. Um, if we go to James 1, 12, it says, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Romans 8, 28, the famous verse says, For all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. James 5, 11 says, See how blessed we consider those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen the outcome of the Lord. This is because, you know, the Lord almost, you know, the Lord re... Um, replenishes Job almost double at the end of his trials. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, that verse finishes. Um, Job 1.12 says, Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will return. This one's used in a lot of funerals. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Um, Job 1.22 says, In all of this, which is in all of Job's trials, Job did not sin or charge God with any wrongdoing. And so who are we? Some of our trials are nothing compared to what Job went through. Yet he did not sin or charge God with any wrongdoing because God is sovereign. No matter what happens to you, whether you choose to turn your back on him or not, he will never turn his back on you. He has promised that he will be with us till the end of time. He will be with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And when we leave the sinful fallen world, we will be with him to eternity. He has promised us this. You know, um, Psalm 31 verse 9 says, I said I will watch my ways so that I will not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle as long as the wicked are present. Just because we are going through a difficult time, we should be so careful to not sin against God. To not open our mouths and charge God with any wrongdoing because he blesses and he is faithful. He is faithful. Psalm 39 verse 9 says, I have become mute. I do not open my mouth because of what you have done. Because we're going through trials, we should keep our tongue from sinning against God. We should use our tongue to praise him because we are to accept the good and the bad from God and praise him through it because we know that ultimately he has overcome the world. He has overcome sin. Ultimately, we will be with him. Our salvation is worked out through Jesus Christ. Ecclesiastes um, chapter 7 verse 14 says, In the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider this. God has made one of these things along with the other, so that a man cannot discover anything that will come after him. Hallelujah. God made adversity and prosperity. So when you're when things are going well and you're feeling blessed, be joyful. When things are going bad, praise God, because he has made one. He has made one of these things along with the other. He made both of them. And say, so no matter what you're going through, give God praise for his faithfulness, for he will see you through. He has promised it and he, has, he will do it. He says that not a word, not a drop of his word will return to him void. And so he has said that he will be with us. He definitely will be, will be with us. Lamentations 3.38 says, do not both adversity and good come from the mouth of the Most High. Hallelujah to the Lord. All these things point us to the fact that God is not unaware of your suffering. He's not unaware of adversity. You know, the Bible tells us that Christ came on earth and he was man. He was God become flesh. He's not not able to empathize with us. He knows what we're going through. He's been tempted. He's been betrayed. He's seen people suffering. 
he has suffered. He was falsely accused. He was beaten to an inch of his life for nothing, for something he didn't do. He died a die a death that was not his to die. And so let us take heart. Let us take heart. Because 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. This is the NLT version. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. The NIV version says no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind and God is faithful. That's put right bang in the middle there. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can endure it. And get this right. God does not say that the way out will be smooth. He doesn't say the way out will be a a smooth helicopter ride. He does not say you will glide out of that situation. Your way out might be a tumble. Your way out might be a tumble. It might feel like a tumble down a cliff where you come out of the other side disheveled. But you will be grateful that you came out. For some people, their way out might be smooth. For some people, their way out might be the easiest extraction ever. But for other people, the way out will be a tumble. You will come out bruised, bent, bitten, battered, but you will come out. This does not say that your way out is going to be easy, but it says that there will be a way out. It says that no temptation has come to you that is not uncommon to mankind. There's nothing new that's come to you. All the trials that you that you're experiencing are very common. Other people have gone through them. But you know what? We have got a promise that God is faithful. He will not let us be tempted beyond what we can bear. And so sometimes if you want to look at your situation and you want to think, hang on a minute, why is my situation so much worse than my sister's or my neighbor's? It is because God knows that you can bear that situation. God knows that you can bear it. And when it becomes too much for you, He has a way out for you. Just trust in him. Trust in him, in his faithfulness. Trust in him. I'm going to do another audio um, another time maybe about, you know, hope. But, and trusting God. But for now, let's just trust in him. Because he has a way out of every situation that you're in. And get this, get this right. Death is a way out. Even death is a way out. How many times have you seen people or if you probably even have had a loved one who has suffered so much in sickness that death is a relief for you and they die and you're sad that they've died and you're heartbroken but you also have this feeling of thank goodness they can rest with the Lord. Thank goodness that the pain is over. Thank goodness that they've gone to be with the Lord and there's no more pain or suffering there. So even death is a way out a way out doesn't have to be smooth doesn't have to be our definition of a way out it is a way out that the lord himself has got planned for us and so let us take faith in that let us end with 1 corinthians 10 13 in our minds that none of our trials are new to mankind that god is faithful that he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear So whatever you're going through, know that you have the ability and the capacity to bear it because God has judged it to be so. Take faith, take courage in that message. And when you are tempted, always know that God has a way out. It might not be the way out you have planned. It might not be a smooth ride. It might not be a smooth parachute ride, jump out of the aeroplane. But he has a way out. You might come out beaten, bruised, battered, disheveled looking like you've been through the wars because you probably have been, but you will come out on the other side. And when you do come out, do not forget to sing of his faithfulness. Do not forget to sing his praises and worship you for bringing you out on the other side. He will provide a way out so that you can endure it. And also remember that everything is a way out. Even death is a way out. And so let us lean not on our own understanding, but on God's ways and his words. 
Let us ask that he would provide us with the grace and the strength to bear our trials. Let us ask that he would give us the, the grace and the strength to trust him through what we're going through. To trust that he has a way out for us. We might not necessarily see it or feel that way. Help us, Lord, to trust that you have a way out for us. And no matter what we're going through, even death is a way out. Help us, Lord, to trust and pray continuously, Lord, that let not our will but your will be done in our lives. Lord, help us to commit our lives to you completely, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Stay blessed, everyone, and um, I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.